Right. right? Tell us a little bit about these various different... Well, Sub General, I think Rocky Marciano was the greatest heavyweight champion that ever lived. I was honored in 1964 to have him come to Westchester County to the Y, where I was coaching, and to do this film called The Art of Boxing. Steve, please tell us about this photo of Rocky Marciano with JFK. Well, Frank, at that time, John F. Kennedy was running for Congress of the United States. He's a New Englander, and Rocky assisted him, or rather campaigned for him, in Brockton and thereabout. So that's what that picture is, and he's sitting with, with mm. JFK. Wow, an incredible photo. Yeah, yeah. Very young John F. K. and a very young Rocky Marciano. Mm. They look like they're in serious conversation. Yeah. Here. All right, and there's one behind it also well, to the me, right. Let me move Let's this one slightly so you can see it better. Uh, Frank, I, I wanted to first point out that one of the most, the most cohesive families I've ever known was the Marciano family. Hmm. So cohesive. Now, in this picture, you see Rocky catching right. his brother Lou, Sonny Marciano, and at bat to bat. And Sonny is younger, right? It looks like I a think couple a little, of years little or so. Younger, not much younger. Not much younger. They're but very, they very separate. close in appearance. Yeah, they were pals. He and Rocky went to the gym. Lou actually sparred with Rocky a number of times. Is that right? Yeah. And he he was an outstanding athlete himself, Lou Marciano. Ball player. And you still see him, oh, right? Yes, I hear you mention him a, quite a bit. A very, he's an integral part of the Marciano picture. Oh. Yeah. He lives in Port Chester. Here. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Right near yeah, Park. Yeah. And then while we're on his table, there's another photo. I'll move that one. All right. Rocky Marciano, world's heavyweight champion. And he's wearing the only authentic belt issued in boxing by Ring Magazine. Hmm. They don't issue the belt to anyone who is not a true champion. In fact, they declare the title vacant if there's no justifiable champion. That's the oldest magazine in the world, I might mention too, founded by Nat Fleischer. It's the oldest magazine? Yes, it is, the oldest boxing magazine. Really? Yeah. Those are pictures of Rocky speaking at the testimony of dinner at Glen Island Casino. Glen Island Casino, right, and they were shown in New York, right? Yeah, this is yeah, after we had made the film. It had the premiere there, and uh, Rocky gave a magnificent talk about the federal boxing bill. <laughs> the belt you see there is an authentic belt. This belt is unbelievable. That belt is issued or given out by Ring Magazine. Ring Magazine. Uh, they, they don't give the belt out to anyone unless he's truly an authentic champion. If you see that listing in their magazine, they, if they don't know who the champion is in that division, they prepare the title vacant. So that's an authentic belt. And that was Rocky's belt? Yes, well, it's, it's a Gak replica of Rocky's belt. I bought that from Ring. And they don't issue them, give them out to anybody, so there's a specific reason. Mm. Since Rocky oh, and I found the AAP, they get it. Let me have a copy, of course, that page. Yeah, your history with him Tell goes me. back so far. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about how you founded the AI, AAIB with Rocky. Well, here's why it happened. It's all, it's all uh, demonstrated or spelled out in the documentary video. But Rocky came to, to the White Plains Y in 1964 to make this video, The Art of Boxing. And <clears throat> something, following that, Rocky was invited to go to Washington to speak to, before the Congress, the Interstate Commerce Commission, which was studying the picture, as Rocky said and trying to determine what to do about safety, administrative competence, and financial accountability for the fighters. We went down together, and what we, what we proposed in the congressional record right there on the table is the exact thing that was later passed in the McCain Bill in 1996. I see. There, was several, there were eight bills proposed, but only one was passed, the McCain Bill in 1996, and when you proposed it with Rocky, in about what year was that? 1967. Very far ahead of its time. Yeah, yeah, we were far ahead. But uh, the Congress passed the bill, but the Senate tabled it. Uh, so where does that bill stand now? The bill has been the bill was passed in, in by the, the 
the McCain bill was passed in 1996, subsequently the Muhammad Ali bill, and then McCain passed a, proposed another wonderful bill, which were all in, which would have been all encompassing. However, it was defeated along party lines, and I can talk about that for now. But okay. In fact, the film that you made of Rocky is here, The Art of Boxing. Now that was the film. Now that's been distributed. That's on publication. Yes. People can actually buy a copy oh, yes. of it. Oh, yes. And can't they also buy a copy in Spanish? Yeah, not not the, the video, but the book. The book, the book in Spanish, yeah, because it's also right. a book too. And the book is the Champion's Guide. Same name. It's just only it's translated to Spanish. Oh, okay. That closet contains all kinds of everything pertaining to Rocky Marciano in the way of film, scrapbooks, etc., etc., etc. In these tins of film. Yes. Right. Sixty million. Every fight, everything he ever did. And now Rocky's family members have been here, right? Oh, yes. yes. Many times, right? Yeah. His brother Lowe, particularly, he lives in Porchester. You might want to get a shot of this huge poster. Where was this from originally, Dan? Uh, this film, uh, Stephanie, was a computerized version of Rocky and Ollie's fight. Oh, that's right. 130, more than 150,000 pieces of information brought into that magic brain. And uh, it was shown all over the nation simultaneously and overseas, too. Because had it been shown any one place before, it would have mm. been defeated the whole thing. Right. So I was at the Lowe's Theater in uh, Yonkers, where I hosted this thing. And when it was all over, it was snowing terribly. I was there with your loyal mom. Yeah. And uh, when the theater manager said, Steve, is there anything we can do? I said, I'd like to have that. So it was taken apart, put in the station wagon. What a memento. Oh, yeah. Gosh, that really and is now something. it's extremely yeah. valuable. So oh. One of a kind, right? The yeah, computerized well, match. Well, Did they well, have any others? Well, I'm sure in some storage place in, in uh, Hollywood somewhere, this was made in my Right. Day. But I mean, any other fight? Fights. Were there any other computerized fights? Well, we have the computer fights on our new documentary video. We show Ali and Rocky actually right. simulating styles. Rocky was much older than, than Ali, right. but the complimentary things Ali said about him was really more heartwarming. Hmm. Is that on video someplace? Yes. Yes. Is that right accessible I've seen that. to other people, really? It's right there. Oh. It's in the art of boxing. Yes, it is. No, okay. it's not in the art of boxing. Oh, it's not. It's a documentary really madness fight. Okay. And this is a uh, caricature or a... Because there was a small heavyweight. He weighed 185 pounds and won the title. And uh, he had the indomitable sphere at the heart of a line of chin and ground. I'd be interested in knowing, too, is that Dad got a st uh, Rocky stamp made. And it's a replica of it, it's this. And actually, you went down to Congress yes, to get that stamp. It's kind of a neat story. It's an inherent story. Right. Yes. I went to Washington with 20,000 names on petitions to the attorney, to the Postmaster General's office. And at the time, he was, seemed to be adamant. You have to be deceased for 20 years to get a stamp, a commemorative stamp. Hmm. So he said, Why this great drive for the stamp? I said, Well, Dempsey's on the stamp. Roberta Clemente, Joe Lewis. I said, even Bugs Bunny. I said, so if you if you if you bother by saying, <laughs> I think a great champion like this, right. who's the only retired undefeated heavyweight champion of all time, deserves the same consideration as a fictitious bug. And you <laughs> Great. Now, when was this taken? I see. Well, the, the date is up. Uh, May 7, 1999. Yeah. This was at the Brockton Historical Society where. There is a lot of Marciano memorabilia and collectibles. So that's his son Rocky as you. Rocky and a stamp. Rocky's brother Lou and other brother Peter. Yes. Excellent. What is this? And this is the stamp. In the documentary video, you'll see the. You'll see the. Uh, while we're talking about. Right while we're talking about Rocky Marciano. Where did I hear the story? Oh, we're dancing here? Already. Yeah, I'm, I'm turning you around because I wanted to get this right. in the background. Right. I wanted you to be in front right. of that if you could. Right. Um, I heard a story. Did I see it in a film or did you tell me a story that 
He was originally lots of stories. But I mean, okay, he was originally going into baseball. Yes. And he went home and his, tell me about well, his, what his mom said to his him. He had a tryout when, ironically, he was trying for catcher, and that great right arm that knocks everybody out couldn't throw a ball to second base. <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> but his mom, he went back to his home, and his mother said to him, Rocky, sit down. And she was the dumbest woman, the apologetic woman. Rocky was sort of similar to her. Yeah. She said, Rocky, I don't want you to fight. He said, Mom, he said, if I lose one fight, I'll quit. So that's why he never lost the fight. And the men had amazing. Yeah. But she said, why don't you be a dancer like Fred Astaire or sing like Frank Sinatra? He says, Mom, I can't sing, I can't dance. <laughs> <laughs> and he ended up winning 49, 49 row, 43, 43 knockouts. And then here he is, here's the, here's the story in the Daily News. I was sick for a long time after hearing that on his death. That's my favorite. He died picture. in a plane crash, yeah. is that right? He was what year was that? It's all in our computer. Or, or when you and I were, he was there to speak to children in an orphanage. Hmm. Children, he, he loved children. And he he so impatient, if you know him, he's, he'd call up from a telephone booth and tell people to call him right back at dinner play. <laughs> and we went down there to sing land as you play to testify in Washington. And it, was, it just looked like you were in a bathtub flying around the air, but he went down together. Well, he liked those little planes. He loved them. And he had so yeah. many friends that had them. Uh -huh. I heard him make the call when he was going down to Washington. He said to Bill Medico, who was a very wealthy man, uh -huh. he was co pilot in the twin engine Cessna. He said, I have to talk to the Congress. He said, I need a ride down there. Like I say, <laughs> can I go to White Plains with you, Frank, tomorrow morning? <laughs> very informal guy. He was, he was not a pompous guy, he was very humble. He'd rather be in, in Brockton with his friends than be in some glitzy affair. And it was that. It was it that plane ride then that was the fatal ride? No. The, no, that okay. one. I'd have been dead too. It was one okay. No, he, 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 went to, he went to Newton, Iowa, and it was 90 miles inland, as I heard you tell you this total story. They told the story. And he was so impatient to get there that an amateur pilot said, Well, Rocky, I'll take you there. So, what did Rocky do? He got into that plane, hit the top of the tree, and, you know, that's the rest of the story. Mm.